Check this out. Lemon Amiga presents. A playtime video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out James Pond Underwater Agent, released by Millennium Software in 1990. See the graphics? The sound effects were created by Chris Sorrell and the music was created by Maestro legend Richard Joseph. The level design was also created by Steve Back and Steve and Chris have also worked on many different games as you will see a bit later on. You can see my high scores in the WHD load version and that's as far as I've been able to get in this game so far. So. You can see on the side of the music it's reminiscent of James Bond and you can even pull left and right to change between the music and the sound effects. Let's start off with mission one and our first mission is simply to locate the keys to free the lobsters from the traps before they are abducted by the evil lobster catcher. up the keys by pulling back and pressing fire and we can also bubble enemies by pressing fire as well. By checking out different hidden parts of the levels we can find some bonuses and by entering those again we can even find a bonus letter. The bonus letters will be very important later on as that will give us a super high score and so at the end of this review maybe you can take advantage of that and impress all your friends by getting a super high score in this game. Back in the day I never got off maybe level 3 and I always thought this was a very difficult game with a very difficult learning curve. But this was played in round 13 of the Lemon Amiga competition last year, last October in 2018 and since we played it in that competition I learned one or two extra things which I didn't know back in the day by playing it in competition. So let's enter this cave and we find another E and the James Pond letters will spell out James Pond eventually by collecting all those letters. In the meantime let's scout around the level and by knocking our head against hidden blocks we can also find some extra points. This is a competition run so unfortunately I've just died but we can find as many points as possible on these levels. Yes, to 10 seconds we will be attacked by a secret agent and if we collect the last lobster when I think the time is an even number then we'll get trophies and a huge point bonus but I got a load of carrots there for blowing up those guys and if you make sure that those guys are on the screen when you pop open the last lobster you'll get some bonuses. So let's check out all the hidden areas on this level and speed up this footage as we find as much score as we can before we move on to the next level of this game. level it's been polluted with radioactive waste and so what we have to do is to collect all the fishy inhabitants. You can see we gained an extra life for going over a score checkpoint and that's neutralized the life that we left by dying earlier on. So let's check out these caves again and in here we find a chest and it's important to avoid the glue because if we are stuck on the level and a bomb appears from this chest we'll just get blown up. So what I'm trying to do is collect all the little chests and the boot and avoiding the clue 
And if you run out of energy, that's the time limit. If you escape the level, you'll gain all of your energy back. And that's one way to continue. But if you go into the same place twice, we'll find a bonus letter. And so let's collect those letters on the level. Now let's gain a bit more score. You can see a magic wand which reveals a fairy. And you can see by collecting this hidden item, we gain half a million points. level you have to watch out because a pelican will drop down and try to swallow us up and so by investigating the very corners of the level we can find a few more bonuses and it's always worth trying to find those and yes there is another cave down there let's see what's in that thing and some flowers these are completely at random you might find teapots or stars or flowers or anything in these caves giving a random points bonus and when you re-enter those you'll find always the same letter so let's grab that p and let's make our way down towards another fish we have to do is touch those fish and they'll follow us all the way back home again and i don't think you can kill those fish deliberately Sneaking down towards that extra time, if we touch that flower, you can see it will kill us. And so evil flowers in this level have to be avoided. The game is pretty linear at this point, and it's very easy to follow the pattern, but you can still get blown up on mines. And I think this level is made with just two screens, with the second one containing the other fish and just pick up a random bonus. Chris Sorrell and Steve Back have worked together on many games, and maybe the first one was Leatherneck on the Amiga, which is a diabolical game, and nobody should be recommended to check that out. And we also get James Pond in 1990, we also get Dogs of War, which is an excellent two-player game, and a shooter, which reminds me of LA SWAT. And they moved on to Robocod, James Pond 2, and then Aquatic Games appeared as well in 1992. And then in 94, we got James Pond 3, Operation Starfish. This last section you can see a magic wand but that's disappeared and sometimes magic wands do disappear and it's important to keep an eye on our health as well we can collect yellow starfish in caves and they will give us a free health top up otherwise we will need to keep up there you go that's one of them otherwise we will need to find a few yellow limpets on the level and that will give us a bit more energy as well those flasks you can see are smart bombs and that's blown up the frogs and I'm just going to collect, and that's another limpet, collect another fish, and that will hopefully give us a bit more bonus score on this level. We can even use the pelican to our advantage a bit later on by luring that guy out to help us and pick us up. And I'm also collecting a bonus item on this level. You can see the green starfish down there. That gives us extra powerful firepower. And there is also a red starfish to collect, which gives us a speed up. There's another time and some more health. We'll definitely need that and another fish to collect. Let's collect that one, but first of all, let's use the pellet. In here you can see we collect what looks like a fish bowl, and that will give us extra health on the surface, and it will help us breathe longer. Unfortunately, you can't collect the fish bowl and collect the later items on the levels, so if you want to collect the later items on the later levels, you'll have to drop that 
as well as dropping all the items that you can collect in this game. And I think once you collect that, it gives you the item. But what I like to do is to return home, and then you can see it gives us the item scrolling along on the bottom of the screen. At the very top, you can also see a few James Pond letters as well. But for the moment, we've only got the helmet and nothing. So let's select the helmet and drop it there. By pulling back and pressing fire, we can collect and drop any items at any point. collected everything, let's march on towards the exit because there is a strict time limit and with only a few seconds to go, I think I've collected everything on this level. You may notice the screen goes a bit small and I think that's a WHD load bug but I'm not quite sure. But you can see the main levels themselves are quite big and I think I've even used the auto screen scaling mode to make this full screen because originally it was probably NTSC compatible so we didn't get much of a full screen experience. On this level it's very hard, this is level 4. The first thing I like to do is to collect the red starfish to give me myself some speed and then collect the sunglasses because on this level there are a few jellyfish. There are two jellyfish on this bottom area and two jellyfish on the top area which we shall see later on and by collecting the sunglasses we can see the jellyfish otherwise they are invisible once they're dead they're dead so let's get rid of them let's get rid of all two things and you also notice some missiles being lobbed out and those pearls as well being shot in a general direction but for now let's just leave the sunglasses where they are so that we can pick up another item. Remember we can't collect items and have sunglasses or helmets at the same time. The aim of this level is to collect gold bars and we can cut out the travelling time by using these warps and by selecting these blocks it will block the bullet which fires on our boat. That saves us getting shot for the rest of the level. You may also notice a ghost pirate running around, there are actually three or four of them on the entire level and there is one in the bottom, one in the middle and one in the top part and it's possible to have two or even three of those ghosts on the single screen at the very same time. Well, let's try to avoid that, let's try to rush through because the time limit is quite tight on this level. Let's collect that extra life and um, yes I did notice the clock on the other side of the level. Let's ignore that for now and keep going for those gold bars. another one but unfortunately the ghost pirate anti chuck hasn't quite caught up to us yet so we can sneak by that guy and romp on back to the boat and collect that token score. At the bottom of the screen it gives us a readout of the time we have 75 seconds remaining but Maybe I've just frozen that time. You can slow down the time and collect extra time as well. And so you can see that we are being almost defeated by the ghost pirate. So let's hide and let's see if he wanders off, which he has done. So it is possible to run straight through him, but you'll incur damage. And we really don't want to incur any damage because this is a very hard level. Sometimes you can respawn outside of those things and the ghost pirate will just kill us straight away. That's what happened to me and it's very easy to do that. So that's one of the quirks of this level and it can make it quite annoying when you go through a teleport and simply die. bottom of the screen we can also see the number of items remaining, in this case it's three and the five below that means that we've collected five items already. Next to that is the score and then the health and then the lives, I think you can collect up to four lives in this game. We have all of the four lives and so let's re-enter that and oh dear the D seems to be blocked by enemies. So let's re-enter that again and it's still not very easy so let's be brave, let's collect that D and let's hope that we collected that because when we emerge we'll get a free energy top up. Again caves and on the surface will give us a free energy top up if we should escape from those and in this case I'm collecting the magic wand 
which allows us to get into this place freely and it gives us free invulnerability for a short time. I saw a bandit wand in the below section, but by the time we get there it's disappeared. No matter if we simply let this catfish run by, it will wander by, and that's another half a million hidden bonus. You notice I didn't go into the cave there because we've already got the letter, it's the same letter as we've already picked up, so we don't need to go into that hard cave. What we really need to do is escape with this gold. And the gold is randomly generated around this map, so it's not always in the same places, but it's usually in the same places, so if you wander around to those areas, you can usually find the gold. You may notice we haven't checked out the big cave, and that's, well, I'm saving that in case I need a yellow starfish and I noticed that there's another gold block in the first section so that means there's only one more gold block to find in the second section and to find that I'm just going to traverse the top part and try to find it and from here we should be able to see it if it's around here I can't see it that means that the galleon must be clear and that means uh oh we're going to take some damage but that means that the gold blocks must be in the first section of the game, the one with the robot. So that's where we're going now. It contains jellyfish, so we need the sunglasses. And let's avoid Captain Birdseye and hopefully get ourselves another life to replace the one that we lost. Let's also take those sunglasses home with us and that means they will be added to the store and by checking out the letters on the top, yes, that D that we found has been added to the James Pond letters. And when we collect all those, it should give us a whopping points bonus. In the meantime, I've got the gigs on, so let's get ourselves a health top up maybe. And sometimes the yellow starfish in these sections get stuck in the wall. Let's collect the S and let's now make our way through towards those jellyfish and there are two, possibly two, maybe even one, oh, I died on the flower maybe two jellyfish or one in this top section unfortunately we can't collect the gold so let's find those jellyfish and let's kill them at the first given opportunity Sometimes there's the jellyfish under the robot and I've been known to die there as well but let's just risk it in this case let's just get the final gold and finally exit from the nightmare which is level 4 that opens up a few exits and we can go back to level 2 or level 3 but we haven't actually been to level 3 yet so let's go there that's an oil rig and so we gained all of the maximum bonus on level 4 I've had to restart that any number of times and died mercilessly and compared to that level 3 is a doddle all we have to do is to collect some dynamite and drop that off at the base of this well oil spilling oil rig and if we collide with the enemies they will deplete our energy at this point first dynamite collected and because we've picked that up that should automatically be stored in our home as an extra item so let's pick that up we have the helmet the shades and the dynamite so using that as an extra item we can gain an extra bonus on this level toilet rolls in the cave and that's not really very interesting so let's leave the cave and let's see if it contains a letter that's an O and O we definitely need an O so let's grab that avoid instant death and get an energy top up again now we can move on to the second section of this level and if we hit any of that oil I think it kills us as well 
Now we'll find a red, well, a number of red starfish that will help us speed up. And we'll need some speed ups sometimes, because sometimes the dynamite is in an awkward place on this lake. collected the all. Let's march through this and it's great to see all those graphics of sea creatures. And you may notice when we destroy enemies they will leave behind a bonus token, most of which I won't collect. That's another half million hidden bonus and that puts our score up to nearly a two million points at this stage. those enemies they will struggle inside a bubble for a bit and I think that that lasts a certain time and then they will escape and chase after us and you only have a certain amount of time to grab that so you can see some extra dynamite on this level we definitely won't leave that hanging around and at the very top of this section there is a boat and also some well what look like um magnetic things which will repel us and it's very difficult to get the dynamite if it's beyond balls, but it doesn't appear to be on this particular random playthrough, which is good. It means we can grab the last of our dynamite and clear this level. Check this one out, it's an A, and I think that we'll need this one. It's important to check out all the caves if you want to find all the bonus letters. Stash and Sticks is now complete. That means we get to go back to level 4 where the Agent Assassin is already on our tail, and so we'll have to leave that behind to get to level 5. And oh, I went through a teleport. And yes, we can get the same hidden blocks on this level to get a bit more score. Let's use this opportunity to get into level 5 before the agent catches up. This is a brand new level, and in this one we'll have to collect toxic waste canisters lying around the Mediterranean and lob those into the path of yobs, which will... Well, log louts will collect those cans, and they will be shaken but not stirred. this bonus cave, this reveals the very last letter that we need, it's an N. Let's grab this, and it's been a long time since we started collecting all them, but that should be the final letter. It doesn't give us any clue or a checkpoint or a warning once that's all complete, but if we go home and check that out, it will. That's a 10 million bonus, so we're now on 12 million, and we gain an extra life as well. comes the hard part, we're going to have to drop this in the path of the yobs, and if the yobs touch us they really do wipe our energy out in seconds, so we can't afford to touch the flowers or the yobs on this level. And yes, we can start collecting letters all over again. According to the game manual or maybe the health sheet, it gives away that you can collect up to three sets of letters in this entire game. We're up to level 5, we've collected one set of letters already, and I think there are 13 or 15 levels in the game, so hopefully one every five levels. And if we touch that flower we'll die, if we touch the job we'll die, if we touch the crane we'll run out of air and die, so what can we do? Well, if we avoid that bullet, that'll help. And the yobs will actually follow us, so if we wander under them, they will go to where we are, and then if we rush out, here we go, rush out from this point, we should be able to drop that off, very lucky, to avoid the pelican. The 
explosions will kill us, so those bullets will have to be avoided, but the explosions even more. And you can see an extra life there, so we don't have to lose lives if we know where they are on the level. You can see I'm trying to lure this guy out with the Union Jack, let's dump him out, and he will get frosted on the surface, and maybe he'll get himself a nice sun tan. But this isn't Benidorm, we'll have to keep on the move because that tight time limit is always tick tock, tick tocking away. And in the last, you know, all these levels and these ways to get through them, it can be pretty difficult sometimes. And so let's lure this guy away and dump this one off. Pelican has got us and we died again, but let's collect the invulnerability. And yes, let's check out the cave. Here is another yellow starfish, yet again stuck in the wall, and yet again if we re-enter this one, this is another letter, this is an S for James. So, that's the S completely collected. We'll need to use the pelican to get out of there, and the pelican acts as a very nice taxi, but we only have 50, well 49 seconds remaining. Collect a purple starfish, it will make you bounce around the level for a while, and if you collect the JB, that makes you drunk for a while and bounce around. So there are a few negative collectibles that we can collect, and if you see a bomb, don't collect that because it will randomly fire bombs around the level, and if we collect the purple starfish and the bomb, that usually means we're going to get killed. In the meantime, we have collected, and by luck or by judgement, we've actually managed to get to the right place. We've collected another canister, let's dump it off, and now we need two more canisters to complete this level. to do is to run around the entire level to make sure that we haven't missed anything and if there's any guys alive that just proves that there are canisters to pick up. So let's collect that invulnerability, narrowly missed instant death again, march straight on into them and dump it off. So that's one easy way to do it. And you can see a teleport leads to another invulnerability. And also by collecting that clamshell you can see that wanders around us and that will kill I think up to five or six enemies before that disappears. Let's get that warp and let's collect another invulnerability and I can't see the canister on this level so maybe it's in the next room. Level 4 is difficult and to some extent level 5 is even more difficult unless you know the level and I'm searching around for hidden half million bonuses at the moment, I can't find nothing so we're going to have to carry on trying, oh look at that, straight through us, we're going to have to carry on trying to open the exit, that's the exit open and I'm going to chicken out at this point and not get any more canisters I don't think because we're already down to two lives but at certain points of certain levels you can collect extra lives but on this one you can see we're down to five seconds so let's lay it if you thought level five was hard then level six is slightly harder because you have to memorize the location of hidden jellyfish Luckily it gives us a pair of sunglasses from the very start, but this is a hard level and you may notice that they do take time to work out. If you know what to do that's great, but if you don't, you're gonna die. Like we've cleared this section and so we can 
check out the next section. It doesn't appear to have any more jellyfish in there, but there is some swag. And you may notice the door is opening and closing. How does that work? Well, there is a tiny little limpet on the bottom of the screen somewhere, and that limpet activates the door. When an enemy touches it, the door will open, and so sometimes the door will randomly open and close as those enemies wander about. If we touch the limpet, that will also force that door to open. And I can't see any limpets on the screen, but hopefully I'll be able to point them out when they are there. Right at the bottom here, you can see that one. It's a tiny little red dot that opens up the door and also the entrance way to some more Rubik's Cubes and, of course, another free letter. point the enemies only stay frozen in there for maybe a whole second so you have to pop them straight away otherwise they'll turn back again and if you have a few enemies on the screen it can be quite frantic to pop them all on this level pretty similar to the last one we'll find yobs and what we do this time is give them the money that way they will be happily given that money and let's collect this extra life which puts us up there back again see the top hat in another section and the top hat will need to work to that when we collect the top hat and have that that means that we'll collect half damage if we hit anything but you can't collect the top hat and the loot at the same time which makes it pretty redundant so what I'm going to do is leave the top hat there you can see on that screen but by finding another warp sometimes this contains swag you can see it contains another one there and then this one leads to the top hat. It's a great effect and it's great that we only take half damage, but because we can't collect anything, it's more or less useless. Those warps are also a bit mysterious because if you end up standing on those, they will warp us around the level and get hit. So, you have to go through the warps and then leave them straight away, otherwise it's a thwarted adventure. Let's wait until the enemies open up this exit, and in this part we can see another clock, which we're definitely going to need, and it also gives a few bonus items as well, and that will ramp up our score. Let's wait for that door to open and let's hopefully collect a few more bonus items, and in the section below it's not too bad but it does have a hidden jellyfish in there so if we rush to get all the bonus items on the bottom of this level well we're gonna have to run the gauntlet let's see if that's going to be possible time the door run in get that extra life and avoid well, there it is that's the hidden jellyfish let's try to avoid that and then play it I never got anywhere near this far back in the day and I think I may be even being thwarted on level 4. I always used to go the, the one 2 four method of completing the levels and it's crazy that sometimes later levels can open up sooner than earlier ones depending on the way that you go through the game. So maybe you have to go through to level 7 and then level 8 and 9 uh, in an order or maybe you can swap those around in a random order and still complete the level depending on which one is easier. This particular level holds at least three or four lives, one of which, or well two of which we found already, and there is an extra two lives in this section as well. So if we are struggling at this point we can collect those, that's another hidden switch, and so this is the final section and that's the final extra life, puts us up there to four. It's 
regret that these levels are fairly linear, but it does take time to explore them to become familiar. If you just entered this level for the first time, you'll be killed mercilessly, and so it's only after repeated plays that I've figured out some of the good ways to get through it safely. If you touch this guy, you won't, you'll simply die. So that's something that I learned the hard way trying to play this game. Once you get this far, it's a survival test and it's also a memory test because you have to watch out for things blowing us up. And so if you haven't played this game over and over and learned all of the levels and kind of mastered it, then you probably wouldn't get this far and you'd probably find the game frustrating. And it was similar for me for Robocard, even though Robocard is an amazing game and I've completed it almost since without killing the big guy at the end I've got all the way there. And that I only discovered yet again thanks to the Lemon Amiga competition because I didn't get anywhere with that game either back in the day. I just rolled it off and I didn't get anywhere with it. This is harder actually than Robocod and the levels do take a longer time to complete than Robocod and there are more enemies and more things to instantly kill us as well and so you have to watch out for random traps as well at some points and random flowers which will kill us but that's good news, that's the door open and we had two bags of swag that we could have collected for more bonus Let's not bother, we only have one life remaining, let's rush on through to that next level. Before we do that, I'll just tell you about another hidden area. Of course there are hidden areas everywhere in this game, and hidden things to pick up, and some more bonuses. And if we should run straight through this column, we'll jump again and emerge on the other side. I'm not going to do that. Or you can take a warp to that swag. I won't do that either, because, well, we're struggling to survive at this point. Let's pile on into the exit, and hope and pray that we get through onto another level. the scores for this game. Amiga Joker seems to have given this the lowest score with 78% and that's tied with Ace who also gave this 78% and Amiga Format awarded James Pond 81% Amiga Power also gave the re-release 83% Zap gave it 85 Zero gave it 86 and I also found Amiga Action gave this 88%. CMBG gave this 90%. Amiga Format gave the re release 90%. Amiga Computing gave the re release 91%. And the highest score goes to Joystick 10 Magazine, who gave this 93%. And the average score in Lemon is 7%. 0.3 out of 10, which means the average score is 8.5 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and review, and I hope to see you again in the next Play Guide sometime soon. Thank you.